welcome back to my channel so uh, today I thought to have a short discussion on various questions which I have posted in this group so if you don't know uh, I have created this group uh, DMID infectious disease study group in uh, Facebook if you have not joined it yet I I request you to join because I'll be posting various questions related to it and at the end of the week I would like to discuss these questions so let's get started so the first question is on candida score so candida score consists of what clinical sepsis TPN prolonged ICU uh, stay surgery presence of central catheter multifocal uh, colonization basically candida score is used as a surrogate market for candida sepsis uh, it consists of uh, a score so it consists of clinical sepsis TPN surgery and multifocal colonization so what that includes 1 2 4 and 6 so that will be option D let's see the answers yes most of them have got it correct the answer is D uh, basically we will have to uh, add the uh, score to determine the whether the patient has increased risk of candidemia or candid uh, this one so surgery will get a score of 1 multifocal colonization 1 total parental nutrition 1 and severe sepsis is 2 so the cutoff value is 2.5 uh, at this, uh, at this 2.5 the sensitivity is around 81% and specificity around 74% uh, if it is more than 2.5 you can suggest that uh, it is suggestive that the patient is un having underlying candidemia or can, uh, candida sepsis. Now next question we have front loading dose is to be given in which antimicrobial vancomycin, voriconazole, polymyxin, ticoplanin. So to, uh, uh, before we uh, uh, answer this question we need to understand where in which situation you will be giving this front loading dose. So basically it is given in concentration dependent uh, kinetics antibiotics uh, and also concentration on time dependency. Also in certain situations where the patient is in severe uh, sepsis or severe there is severe infection in that case again you will give a front loading dose in order to uh, reach the or reach or attain the therapeutic levels um, at the earliest. So in uh, it is uh, most commonly given front loading dose is recommended or front loading or loading dose is recommended polymyxins both your cholestine and polymyxin B uh, uh, ticoplanin, vancomycin and polymyxin or uh, voriconazole sorry voriconazole so it is recommended in all these situation uh, so it, the answer will be all of the above uh, vancomycin again it is given as a front loading dose in situations where the patient is in severe sepsis next all are correct about ABPA except so basically ABPA what does ABPA stand for ABPA stands for allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis uh, so there is various criteria for uh, ABPA um, so the first and foremost is uh, positive immediate cutaneous so there is two two things in uh, ABPA mandatory criteria and other criteria so mandatory criteria must be uh, followed followed by at least two of the other criteria mandatory criteria includes IgE specific uh, to aspergillus fumigatus or positive uh, skin test that is positive type 1 uh, hypersensitivity to aspergillus fumigatus antigen and uh, total serum IgE levels total serum IgE levels should be more than 1000 uh, international units per ml so and uh, so basically that that means so the patient should have skin test positive with total IgE more than 1000 or IgE specific to uh, aspergillus fumigatus and uh, total serum Ig that would be the mandatory criteria in the other criteria the other criteria includes uh, IgG against aspergillus fumigatus positive IgG against aspergillus fumigatus total eosinophil count of more than 500 cells and radiological changes typical of AVPA that is central and proximal cylindrical bronchiectasis 
alteration of the predominantly in the upper loop nodules at the lactases or a trapping so if the uh, one mandatory criteria and uh, at least two of the other criteria is satisfied then you are going to tell the patient is uh, probably having allergic uh, bronchopulmonary aspergillosis so here the wrong option will be total eosinophil count of more than 1000 which should actually be more than 500 so next question we have the drugs exhibiting post antibiotic effect are all except so what is post antibiotic effect or PAE so this is one of the important property of an antibiotic that that uh, says uh, whether the patient uh, the effect of the drug will continue beyond the dose so these are exhibited by the antibiotics aminoglycosides, fluoroquinolones and beta lactams and to some extent by cholestin as well but here among the option the better option will be cholestin which does not effect, uh, have a prolonged post antibiotic effect. So next question look at the image and answer. So all are uh, stool concentration technique except so what is this image so this is the image of a uh, so this is the image of a sedimentation technique so what are the sedimentation techniques here formal ether technique is wide known or uh, very well known acid ether also is one of the concentration uh, sedimentation technique saturated salt solution is a form of flotation technique and harada mori technique where do you use in case of strong eloidus so in this case uh, the uh, exception will be both c and d because they are asking uh, based on the image shown if you have to choose one best option harada mori technique would be the better option so next we have this question according to the new eortc msg erc criteria for diagnosis of invasive aspergillosis uh, the galactomin and test is considered to be positive when the od is more than or equal to 0 0.5 1 1 1.5 and 2 so basically this eortc or msgrc is uh, uh, the uh, they make the cons uh, consensus uh, definition for the diagnosing a case of invasive aspergillosis which includes host factor, clinical feature, mycological evidence and histopathological evidence. So under host factor you have uh, patients who are having more than equal to more than 10 days of neutropenia, uh, all, uh, uh, hematological uh, bone marrow transplant, hematological malignancy, who are more than three weeks of uh, corticosteroid immunodeficiency etc and the clinical feature we have ct sign positive ct sign at least the patient should have either a halop sign positive or um, well circumscribed uh, lesion uh, with air present sign or cavity or consolidation which can be wedge shaped or segmental or lobal consolidation mycological evidence is said to be if the patient is having the direct microscopy or culture positive which are from either from the bowel or the sputum or the uh, CSF aspirate then uh, galactomenon criteria where the patient is said to be positive if their uh, cutoff is more than 1 basically in 2008 criteria they have said it as more than 0 0.5 but uh, now uh, they have uh, taken considered it to now they have changed it into 1 so single either bowel or serum or CSF if the patient is having more than one galactomenon OD it's considered to be positive or if the if, uh, serum is having more than 0.7 and bowel is having more than 0.8 it is still considered to be positive or you can do aspergillus PCR at least two you should demonstrate in two samples or two consecutive samples uh, two consecutive serum or two consecutive bowel sample uh, positivity or one serum and one bowel positive by the PCR. So if the patient is having histopathologically confirmed aspergillosis the case is said to be a confirmed case of asper invasive aspergillosis. If the patient is having host clinical and mycological uh, factor mycological evidence then it is considered to be a probable case if any of these is missing like the patient having only host and clinical no mycological evidence that is a possible case of invasive aspergillosis so here the answer would be one so that's it for today i'll be posting more questions discussion
soon in my next videos so don't forget to like share and subscribe to my youtube channel and please join this group so i'll be posting the questions and few topic short topic related discussion and the various ppts uh, and the material required for the preparation in this group don't forget to keep learning bye